My name is Karen Frischman. I'm a Pilates instructor from Los Angeles, California, and I'm here to introduce you to my all-time favorite teaching tool, the C-Shaper, also more affectionately known as Betty. Betty got her name because we couldn't remember the name of the C-Shaper, and uh, it's a little bit more accessible if I tell somebody that we're going to work them really hard on Betty than it would be if I told them that they'd have to get the C-Shaper out. It does help people to find and deepen their C-curve and be able to build stronger abdominals, uh, but it also offers support, feedback, and works as a beautiful stepping stone into the traditional mat work without having to create modifications or changes to the exercise. So we're going to start with a really basic exercise, which is the roll back. So Christine's going to have a seat, and she's going to bring her tailbone towards the front curve of uh, Betty. And for a little additional support, I usually like to anchor the feet under the strap. When I teach this exercise for the first time, I'm going to have her bring her hands under her thighs for additional support. And she's going to pull her center in, round her back, and roll back into the barrel, into the curve. And you can notice that it's going to give her information about where she's landing. She's a little bit tight today. And so we've got the upper back hitting before the mid back. So we're going to try and work as we go through the exercises to smooth that curve out. She's going to do it again. We're going to round the back. Notice how it keeps the pelvis in that front placement so that she's got that ideal rounded back, ribs in. And then I'm going to have her walk her hands up her thighs one and she's gonna pull herself off the barrel one vertebrae at a time. And she's gonna sit tall. As the student advances, I'm gonna take away the support for the low body and the hands are gonna come up shoulder height and we're gonna to continue to work that curve with the same uh, specificity that we had in the last exercise. And as she's getting warmed up, her body's starting to be able to open up and form into the curve. And she's working those low abdominals a little bit harder because she's able to stabilize the pelvis in this position one more time. This is going to be able to advance the learning in the rollback so that we can get onto the roll, the full roll up a little bit sooner onto the mat. Good. And come up. Nice. Now we can also use this for support for the stomach series, or they're either called the stomach series, the series of five, the abdominal series. So we're gonna have Christine roll back into the barrel and she's gonna find that C curve here. This is a really great way to start to teach these exercises for students who may have a sensitive neck and still need to develop the support, but need more abdominal work then we can offer with a flat back. So this is a really great way to get them to build that strength so that we can do this unsupported or we can start to add in the hundreds on the mat or um, the half hundreds. So I'm gonna have Christine bring her knees into her chest and we're gonna find the first position for the single leg pull. She's gonna bring her outside hand onto her ankle and her inside hand on the knee so that we can pull the leg into the chest. We're gonna stretch the other leg out and the trick of this is to make sure that we maintain that even curve into the barrel throughout the exercise. Again, Betty's gonna do the teaching for me so that I don't have to maintain the curve. Christine's gonna be able to feel where she is in on space and when her back is lifting up so that the learning is in her body and her understanding. Good. It is not easy. Supportive, but really gets to the heart of the matter. Good, and then we're gonna move on to the double leg pull. For a beginner, I can assist holding the ankles. The arms, uh, the first way I teach this, arms go overhead, legs go out. And then the arms are gonna go straight down and the knees are gonna come in. Good, I prefer the knees about shoulder width apart, heels together, toes apart, and we're gonna press out so that we can get the wrap in the seat, pull in and then press out. Now, for a more advanced student, I'm gonna really emphasize making sure that the rib cage stays in the curve as the arms go out. So we're gonna get greater stretch and greater connection into the shoulders. And we're gonna press out. And then the arms are gonna come down around. We're gonna press in and pull in and exhale, exhale, exhale all the air. And again, and press, good. If we're moving on to the abdominal series, we're gonna move on to the single straight leg stretch. 
good. Now again, this is going to be for a more advanced student who maybe has a tighter back and loses the round back or the C-curve in these exercises. We're going to be able to feel where we are in space and we're going to pull, pull and switch. And again, and switch. Good. We're going to do one more set and then we're going to move on to the double straight leg stretch. Legs to the ceiling, hands behind the head. Good. Now from here, again, we don't have any movement, so we're gonna really be able to work the legs out and to be able to find the support from the seat and deepen the lower abdominals in this position. This is the best way I know of to be able to advance the teaser number two with the lower and lifting of the legs. And then we can move on to the crisscross. Knees come into the chest. Good, one leg stretches out and we're gonna twist. Again, with the support of Betty, we're gonna be able to really find that rotation in the correct position. Good, and switch. I'm gonna be able to get my student to move from her center rather than bringing the elbow in, which is a common, uh, common movement pattern. Good, and then switch and relax. And sitting up for a second. So some of the more advanced exercises that we can use Betty for um, would be to advance the hundreds for somebody with a really tight back to be able to really find and deepen the C curve or what I call the round back. So I'm gonna have Christine lie back and she's gonna find the position. Again, for, a, base, for a, a newer student, a beginner, I might start the hundreds here, particularly if they have some neck discomfort in the exercise. It's gonna allow me to develop the upper abdominal muscles safely and without strain. So the hands can come by the side, belly comes in, we're in the C curve, we've got those low abdominals working and we're gonna pump and in and exhale for five, good. Now we can advance this exercise by stretching the legs out straight, but keeping the pelvis in the curved position. So pull in, this is not easy. So this is what we call the half hundred. Stretch the legs out as long as you can. Find that hundreds position right there and pump. And then we can lengthen the legs out and up and bring them up into the full hundreds position. Oh, this is not easy. Good, and pull in. Because we're not allowing the torso and pump to flatten out, we're really getting that deep C curve and those lower abdominals, upper abdominals in the seat are working like crazy. Bend your knees, relax for a second. Good. Um, some of these exercises can actually also be done if we have um, pregnant clients who can no longer lie prone. Some of them are a little bit more advanced, but just keep that in mind in something that you might wanna think about using this piece for. We can also challenge our students with um, a limited range of motion, but also maintaining the C curve. So we can do some of the rolling exercises like the rolling like a ball and the open leg rocker. So we're gonna come up Again, not for beginners, they're difficult. Nothing's gonna happen if we have a student who um, may not have enough abdominal strength to do it in bed eight, they're just not gonna be able to come up. So you're gonna bend your knees into your chest, you're gonna grab your ankles, you're gonna pull in, and we're gonna roll back, and then we're gonna come up. So for many students, when they're learning the rolling exercises, as they roll back, they lose the round back, they flatten out, and they have trouble coming back up because they can't find that position. So this is a great way to learn how to find that and maintain it through the exercise. And then we're gonna go into your open leg rocker. And then we're gonna roll back. And come up, shoulders down, good. That's it, maintains the pelvic position, the torso position. Good. If I were really mean, we'd do the closed leg rocker, but I'm oh. not, <laughs> and bring the legs down. Good. Finally, I also use Betty to um, help with the teaser. So one of the issues that many students have is understanding where the pelvis should be placed for the teaser 
And to be able to find that core strength and the support from the back side of the body rather than having the legs hang off the quads or the hip flexors. So being able to do the teaser with this curve and being able to round back and stay in the round back as we come up is gonna help those people, particularly with the tight backs and the tight psoas, to be able to find that position a little bit easier. Again, these are not easy exercises, but they're really supportive and they give tons of feedback. So the legs come up. Good, and you're gonna find your teaser position. You're gonna pull your center in. You're gonna round your back and roll back into Betty. Find your curve. We're going to know immediately what's tight, what's working, and what's not, and then we're going to come back up. Good. So this is teaser one, and you're going to roll back and come up. And then teaser two, we're going to stay here and lower and lift the legs. So this is more advanced than what we did in the stomach series. Same idea. And we have the lip here that's gonna be able to let those legs start to work from the back line of the body a little bit better. And you're gonna come up. And then we're gonna do a little modified teaser three. So we're gonna lengthen out, smaller range of motion. Oh, stay in the round back and everything comes in. Good. And one more time. And come up. And you're gonna bend your knees and sit tall. Great. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial on Betty. Again, I think it's one of the best teaching tools that I have in my studio. It offers feedback, it offers support, it offers a challenge. And for me, fundamentally, it doesn't modify or change the exercise. It just allows us to do the work and creates a stepping stone so that students can be able to do the full traditional mat. Thanks so much.